step at a time from there. Um, my uh, other presenters are, um, we've got uh, Bellum and we've got Beams and we've got X. Um, you might recognize us a little more if you see us this way. <laughs> um, anyway, um, do you guys want to say hi? Or should hey, we just- Thanks for joining. Yeah, thank you all for joining. This has been a, a, an awesome ride. We're looking forward to telling you about it. Yeah, all likewise. Right. All right. All right, cool. I'm going to hit the play button. I'm going to mute myself. We're going to watch the, the first the first segment. Let, let me know in chat if there's any issues, everyone. And uh, here we go. Hello. Hey. How's it going? I am checking my setup because it's not quite right yet. Twenty twenty is a year that will live in our memories forever. Australia on fire. A global pandemic. Civil unrest, protests and rioting. All in the first half of the year. The world has been thrust into uncertainty and chaos. Just kidding. That's not how we roll. Protein folding is the physical process by which a protein chain acquires its native three-dimensional structure, a conformation that is usually biologically functional in an expeditious and reproducible manner. It is the physical process by which a polypeptide folds into its characteristic and functional three-dimensional structure from a random coil. What does that even mean? What does it even mean? What does it mean? Proteins are polymer chains of amino acids. Before proteins can do any work, they need to fold up into a functional three-dimensional shape. Different parts of the protein, which may be relatively far away, come together because of the attraction between the component amino acids. Misfolding can produce a protein in the wrong shape. This makes the molecules toxic and dangerous. Misfolded proteins can cause other proteins to misfold and also become toxic. Also become toxic. Bum, bum, bum. Bum, bum, bum. Diseases such as mad cow, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, types of cancer, and ALS were previously considered unrelated, but are now known to be related to protein folding. So, um... Uh, protein folding, um, there's a lot of diseases that actually turn out being related to uh, misfolded proteins. Um, it means a lot to me. My, my mother um, passed at 64 years old with uh, Parkinson's disease. And, um, you know, if, if what we're doing can kind of help, you know, other people not suffer with that, it's something that's really meaningful to me. Um, and I mean, and with... 
gosh, everyone's being affected with COVID right now. Um, and so from that aspect, it's, it's clearly something that everyone can relate to. Um, it's become a cause we can all kind of get behind. I still don't exactly know what all of those terms mean. <laughs> um, themes, Pelham, X. It, it's not just about the uh, internet folding points, internet fake points, whatever. No, yeah, I, I think, um, I mean, you know, I'd done this for a little while with, with Parkinson's and some of the other diseases, but then, you know, you didn't really see a lot of impact. And so when COVID came along and they actually had work units, you're like, wow, this is really bad. So let's see if we can make um, some sort of difference here. I think at, at first, though, for the first couple of months that we started, um, we were thinking that, hey, not really sure what's going to happen, but this is fun. Let's join in. And then slowly over time, we were like, let's get more points. And then then we started to actually see the fruits of our labor with some of the scientific journal stuff that had come out with updates from the folding at home project around the COVID results. Tim disappeared. We, oh, <laughs> so uh, Bellum just crashed. He'll join us again in a moment. Um, I think we'll go ahead and um, should we go ahead and queue up the uh, what is folding at home? Sure. Uh, let me grab the URL for that. We'll get that shared. Folding at Home is a distributed computing project aimed to help scientists develop new therapeutics to a variety of diseases by the means of simulating protein dynamics. This includes the process of protein folding and the movements of proteins, and is reliant on the simulations run on volunteers' personal computers. Uh, Folding at Home is a distributed computing project, and for those of you who have already dabbled in that, think of more, most recently the SETI at Home search for extraterrestrials, and for those who are really old school, think back to the late 90s and the distributed.net uh, search for RC5 keys. We're taking work products and we're throwing them out to thousands of CPUs and GPUs out there to help folding at home do its thing. Um, they are helping scientists model proteins in a variety of ways, simulating this protein dynamics, how the protein folds itself and configures itself, all in order to find new therapeutics, new pathways. And one of the things that we're doing here is attacking COVID-19 to, to lend our CPU and GPU to that battle. But Folding at Home is doing stuff like Alzheimer's research, cancer research, uh, and a whole bunch of other things to help humanity. Um, so the process of folding proteins and the movement of proteins, it's all to find this attack angle, to, to model this thing in 3D and find a way for a therapeutic to get in there. And it's all reliant on having this massive amount of CPU and GPU to do this 3D math so the researchers can find this new attack. So folding at home is, um, you know, that's, that's, that's the software uh, client, the distributed software client that we're using to fold proteins. Um, they, um, um, it, it's, it takes a lot of computer, uh, compute, com <laughs> computational power um, to, um, to fold the proteins, there's, you know, these long amino acid chains and um, all of this stuff that has to come together. And uh, they have a lot of scientists working to um, help look at a lot of different things and how the misfolding of proteins affects these things and providing the computational power and, you know, looking for, you know, teams like us to kind of um, provide, you know, a lot of that. And I think that we've done a a pretty good job. Um, awesome. Yeah. Um, folding at home is a really, I think, I, I, they're sciencing a lot of shit, um, for lack of a better way to put it. Um, it's, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's really pretty important stuff. Um, I'm not the best at putting that level of scientific stuff in into words. And if anyone else um, wants to kind of jump in and maybe 
um, add some, um, it's it's a it's a great organization. They're really helping to make things easy for everyone to take part, which I think is a really um, huge component of getting a lot of things done. Like it ha it has to be easy, it has to be relatable, and they they've done really good at at putting that together. Yeah, uh, folding at home, they've made it as easier than I think any of the other uh, distributed computing projects that we've had to or we've used in the past. SETI had its kind of weird quirks as it started out and the distributed.net stuff way back in the day uh, also had some weird quirks to make sure that that thing ran and was easy. But folding at home is decently easy. Install it, get it running. At worst, you have to deal with some Linux driver issues if you're trying to run it there. Um, or, you know, God forbid you try to run it on a Mac. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Um, yeah, and um, if you guys have any questions, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that some of you guys are going through the process of installation right now. If you haven't done it already, if you have questions, queue them up. We'll keep an eye on the chat, and we'll either answer them as um, as they kind of, you know, roll into what we're doing, or we'll we'll get to them at the end. And um, so, yeah, um, I think we'll go ahead and queue up the next video. Is that all right, guys? Sounds good. Sounds good. Distributed computing is a field of computer science that studies distributed systems. A distributed system is a system whose components are located on different networked computers, which communicate and coordinate their actions by passing messages to one another. The components interact with one another in order to achieve a common goal. Three significant characteristics of distributed systems are concurrency of components, lack of a global clock, and independent failure of components. Botnets. A botnet. A botnet. Botnets. A botnet. A botnet. Botnets. Botnet. Hi, I'm Space Rogue. Now, hackers have a long history helping out and pitching in with projects like this. Way back in the 1990s, I ran a distributed computing team for a group I was involved with known as Loft Heavy Industries. That group was attempting to crack the RC5 encryption cipher through distributed.net. Like the Root Folds team, the Loft RC5 team rose from nothing to the top of the charts in a very short time, with the help of thousands of hackers from around the world devoting their spare CPU cycles to the cause. The difference between the old Loft RC5 team and the new Root Folds team is we might actually save some lives this time. Uh, first, I want to say that uh, Space Rogue, gosh, he has a voice like butter, doesn't he? Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, there is a long history of this kind of involvement um, in the scene. And uh, I think, uh, you know, a lot of us up here on this panel are old enough to remember, <laughs> to remember those things and, and to have been involved. Um, um, at first, I don't know. I mean, I think back to like, um, the RC5 stuff, and I don't want to say that it seemed subversive, but it definitely seemed like it was in line with, um, like, like kind of the hacker causes that we we sort of had in mind, um, and and definitely kind of a like a like a bigger, broader like benefit to the world, um, and and there's also this competitive aspect that I think help help helps to really spur, um, you know, not only like you know, not only is it fun to be like fuck you beams i passed you it's 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 really awesome when your team is like skyrocketing past um other other teams and doing really well um you know and and i think a key component to getting that kind of success is um you know a lot of the ideas that uh, that uh, we kind of stole not i mean stole you know you adapt and you deal um <laughs> But um, we had a lot of good influences um, in terms of how to motivate from folks like uh, the loft and everything, and um, uh, getting people to to join the cause has has been really fun and rewarding. Um, yeah, and I think when we were when we were when we were first starting, um, I remember well joined, and all of a sudden um, we were he had like six gaming computers, like his kids' computers, his computers, whatever going. And I just remember trying to convince his, his his wife to go tell his son that he needed to play Minecraft some more so we would steal some points away. So it was there was a lot of competitiveness, <laughs> but at the same time, like, you know, it was still going 
for that that cause. And then the other thing was, you know, sitting there trying to figure out what GPUs to buy, and then also hearing about the power bill and all sorts of interesting things. But uh, you know, like I said, the, hopefully the end results are are worth it. There's there's also a bunch of people um, from the the kind of the the seed of our team. You know, there, there's Space Rogue Network, uh, Core, and those guys really started to blow out the points. Um, you know, even even Craig, you know, when he was, he had some data center capacity to use from work. And it's funny that now that we're all grown up, it's a lot different than back in the day when we had very limited funds and it was hard to help out in these causes. And now um, people are like, yeah, I'm getting ready to shut down my data center and move some stuff over here. But I think we can do some folding over here and... Other people are like, yeah, let's buy a couple extra GPUs. So it's it's been rewarding to have a little bit more flexibility now that we're 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 all grown up. And being all grown up, well, let's talk about kind of where we came from. Let's get into a little bit of uh, you know the name of the team that that we've established is is Root Folds, and and that's based on uh, Root. So let's let's roll into the uh, what the poop is Root. Um, portion of our video stuff so here we go founded in 1994 root was one of the first computer hacker groups in the post bolton board system era they were primarily known for their early humorous take on security industry advisories and hosting semi-annual parties root grew to become a hacker think tank of computer security experts consisting of members of other well-known hacker groups such as cult of the dead cow Loft Heavy Industries, The Legion of Doom, and Masters of Deception. Root is what I like to refer to as a hacker supergroup. Uh, jokingly, of course. I like how Joseph Mann called us the old guard. All the old guard hackers. Brap. Uh, it was founded in 1994 by a hacker named Osaka. It was created as sort of a satirical group poking fun at other hacker groups at the time, especially 8LGM. Root includes members from many other groups, such as Cult of the Dead Cow, Masters of Deception, and the Guild, and we frequently posted Onion-esque articles and security advisors to bug tracks, such as the race condition and the letter made deluxe self-cleaning litter box. Over the course of the last 25 years, we've remained mostly in touch and become working steps. We get together once every year in, in Las Vegas before DEF CON, which is sort of like a high school class reunion, except for people you actually want to see. Several of us have recently delved into doing some charity work, and the Folding at Home program seems like a great way for us to give back a little and unite hackers from all over the world to join us for stickers and prizes. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I share the specific URL for the, for the next one instead of like pausing and playing. Um, so that's who Root is, Root. Um, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. Um, we're serious, but we're not serious. Um, the, <laughs> the litter made vulnerability, as said in the chat, was full on legit race conditions, legit. <laughs> um, so I don't know. I mean, it's in it's in the spirit of I feel like the whole like 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 root thing that we kind of present this way with a little bit of uh, you know casualness and fun. Um, so Scott, I'm sorry, X, leap <laughs> X. Um, just dox me. Could maybe say, maybe just say a little more. Um, About the litter made one. Yeah, sure. Um, I feel like uh, Red Dragon. There was there were several people living at this house at the time. It was like Cracks and Red Dragon and B and uh, whoever else out. And and Red Dragon liked to buy the most expensive stuff, so they bought this three four hundred dollar cat box that supposedly would rake the. Uh, the litter into a container and then come back. But uh, he did discover that if the cat got behind it uh, while the raking comb was going backwards, that the cat could get trapped somehow. So we, we, we wrote up an advisory, posted a bug track, and we used to have to get, uh, uh, who's the guy that ran bug track at? LF1. I used to have to message him privately to 
to approve all of our advisories because they were so ridiculous. So, uh, that was a fun one. There's there were several other ones, not as good though. That was probably probably the best one. So, uh, yeah, that's who we are. That's what we do. <laughs> um, I like to describe us as like the onion of hacker groups. Um, but at the same time, there's there's, you know, we we kind of are made up of. It's almost like a meta group, kind of made up of you know a little bit of everybody and. And a lot of people have, you know, gone to really kind of important places. And uh, I don't know, I'm proud of us. Um, and uh, I guess we should kind of maybe roll right into the next segment, which is kind of how this rolls into um, our folding team and what we've done with that. So I'll go ahead and get that queued up. Welcome back, Bellum. It's hot at your place, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get this queued up. I think this one is my favorite, my favorite one. I'm not trying to give anything away. Hang on, here we go. The Root Folds Folding at Home team was founded by Bellum and Beams on April 4th, 2020, and quickly rose through the ranks into the top 100 of over 250,000 teams. This is their story. And then fast forward to uh april i i had a conversation with with beams i'm like hey i'm doing this oh shit so am i all right i had this other idea ran it past x just to make sure it was cool to to use the name and that's when i asked peg that faithful question i've been waiting my whole life for this moment will you make me a sticker all right i don't know what folding is but uh sure One of the cool things, like the conversation we all just had about the tweaking and getting, like squeezing every millimeter of performance out of that thing. I thought that that was such an incredibly cool byproduct of going from obsessing over case statistics in the COVID channel to all of us now concentrating and sharing information and sharing knowledge about how we're tuning and the, and the things that we're doing to eke out the performance and it just yes. I mean for me personally it just put me in a better mental space all throughout March and April Scott help me out here I mean so we're talking about that day and it was like like here can we do this we made a sticker and then suddenly like we had done a thing and we had a team and the team was just 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 going yeah um, and Weld had done some some stats i think um so first off uh, just to get into some of the technical aspects of it and i don't know if, if if we cover this later but um we we figured out that gpus graphics cards obviously have a bit more of a bonus because they, they can do a lot a lot of work um but then at the same time there's people who had tons of cpu lying around not doing anything uh, and you don't have to be somebody with some massive compute farm. I mean, the whole point of this effort was really to encourage other people to join in and be a part of the team. It's, obviously, it's fun for our team to kind of race to the top and, and you know, add more points here and there. But at the same time, you know, uh, 
every little contribution helps. And what was cool is that through, you know, I think the, the four of us and then even more like, you know, core network, uh, you know, a lot of other uh, friends of ours recruiting other people. I think we started to rise through the ranks and we never really expected to see ourselves passing Google and all of these other teams. Um, and so that was super fun to see that, like, we went from, like, team, like, I don't know, 100,000 something, 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 and went quickly up. So I was pretty impressed with that. Yeah, it was uh, kind of fun to jump. Yeah, any any excuse for me to send people stickers and print more stickers, then I'm going to do it. Yeah, we like stickers. Stickers are a pretty good motivator. That, um, and and I, I can't say, I, I have to say, though, I think, like, the artwork that you did, Peg, kind of pulled a lot of it together because it was cool for people. And, you know, Scott and Peg, you guys were tweeting out from the, the Root Owns Twitter account. And all of a sudden, people were like, yeah, send me some stickers. I'll join the team. And we started to see these points increase. Um, so the competitive nature of it, I have to say, definitely helped encourage the growth. Um, you know, again, I think what what are we? I don't know where we are now on the charts. And I know so like sometimes so like Weld went through some periods where he was like upgrading power network was doing the same thing at his house. So sometimes our points dipped a little bit. Um, sometimes our botnets kind of stopped performing as well as they should have. But overall, we were uh, you know collectively so doing pretty well. Um, this is how well we're doing. When I did my final edit of the video this morning, we, we were at number 75 and now we're at number 72. Boom. Oh, wow. 72. Um, that's pretty intense. Um, so, um, yeah, winning is fun. Um, it's, 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 it's always good to know that you're, you're working on something that's for the greater good, but when you can, you can quantify it and really see that it's taking off. Um, that's really, really super, super special. Um, yep. And to and be a part of a botnet, like to actually be a part of a botnet, that's awesome. Willingly. Consensually. Part of a botnet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and load up the next little stuff that kind of gets a little bit more into um, the art aspect and, and kind of brings um, and obscure if you're on, feel free to um, uh, enable your uh, app, app, microphone after the, the the video, but uh, like this is this is this is our our little talk here, and so um, um, you know we had so much um, artistic influence from you know CDC and the loft and um, um, the merch and the swag that came from conferences, you know, over the last 20, 25 years, and uh, so we had a lot of inspiration to draw from. And so I, uh, there, so the part of this conversation that you don't see is kind of me being like, so Paul, how do you feel about me stealing? Like, uh, cause CDC has done, you know, I mean, stick, everyone's done stickers, but patches and coins. And it was like, that was like our next progression in terms of having, a, you know, um, getting people involved and in making um, a contest and um, rewards for people for, for, you know, quite frankly, really pretty extreme levels of production. So uh, let me get that video rolling. So I had this like idea, like, all right, it's good enough. Let me show it to them. They roll with it. And then it's like, all right, it is good enough. It can still be kind of hard not to you know, at the same time, you have to deal with the cringe factor of having unleashed something into the world. I've had a lot of that because I've got 30 years worth of stuff out there. Oh, this whole process has been really fun. <laughs> There's a lot of um, artistic inspiration that has come before me that has um, helped, like one, set the bar for what things need to be at. And it's a pretty high bar and uh, to help make it fun and pretty. I like things being pretty. It's something that's like a big part of my life. So having a fun reason to create things and really awesome inspiration to draw from is really, really amazing. 
Oh yeah. And to, and to get the enthusiasm and the energy flowing to just keep more things coming. Half of the fun is finishing one thing so that you can start on the next thing. Um, all right. I am checking on uh, our next video. I feel like I feel like I might have paused one of our videos early. So if you give me a second, I'm going to see if I can queue up because there's there's a little bit where it's beyond beyond the stats that we've achieved. There's there's more to it than just you know these numbers, and so I want to make sure that I sh I, I get that video. So um, let me try to cue that up. All right, no, you know something went wrong there. Um. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and cue up. The next one, which is what to expect when you're folding, because um, it it's rewarding. It comes it comes with some caveats. So uh, so uh, let's let's cue that one up. My ears became attuned to the fan noises when I woke up. Like I'd have my first cup of coffee and I would just listen to the room to make sure everything was still up and running. It's, it's like the hum of a submarine. Like Put my hand behind my fan as I leave my room <laughs> and like it's warm, it's cool, it's cold, something's not cool. You know, I'd like to add another G another Tesla GPU on. It, it became what all these projects become, right? It became community. And, and we don't yep. know everyone who's folding with our team, but like all these projects that we've spun up in the past, we, we just fold in community, right? We build exactly. community around it. Winning is pretty fun. All right. Um, with that said, I think we'll go ahead and um, like, we've got a, you know, we've got our, our, our special guests go ahead and, uh, Turn on your your mics and your cameras now, and we'll just kind of start uh, kind of rolling from here. We'll uh, let me see if I can get the the PDF file rolled up. That's going to kind of guide us through the installation process and and keep us on track a little bit here. Um, uh, I put that link over here. <clears throat> It wants me to, oh, okay. Um, all right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load the presentation where I can see it and guide things from there because right now it wants me to upload a PDF and I thought that it would link to a shared PDF the same way that it was linking to the video URLs. So um, at this point, um, uh, should I pull up um, the, the, uh, the, uh, graphic with the download URL information. Is there anyone that that needs to know the uh, download URL? Should I dump it into the chat? Um, all right. Let me. Um, all right. So. <clears throat> I want to I want to I want to wrap back up to a part where I think I think I might have like missed out on um, the ending of a chapter of a video. It's 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 in the the full video. We'll make the full video and the, the various chapters available um, once the, the meeting is over. Um, but what got left off is um, there was a, a, a period of time where I think a lot of us were kind of obsessing over COVID statistics. And um, being able to focus on this versus COVID statistics, um, like we felt like we were doing something, um, and uh, it just it 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 gave us something to to focus on and to concentrate on. And um, guys, chime in a little bit. Let me um, let me get the PDF loaded up so that I can get. Uh, yeah, for sure. um, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, 
it just uh, it's just the the biggerness of it um we'll get started with um the download stuff once i get that graphic loaded and i'll get that in a second but hey peg i think the video keeps looping for people yeah it's not stopping here let me go ahead oh here we go does that there. yeah all right all right apologies for that let me get our, our pdf loaded but for now you guys go ahead and let's let's talk so, about the, the origins of everything so th there was this one thing um in late february where i think all of us were just obsessing over these new dashboards that had come out from hopkins and a few other places that were like piling all this data together uh for COVID, and it was just like this massive obsession over something that was incredibly negative. Um, and then we started doing this and we found a positive outlet for all of that energy and a positive way of kind of redirecting our, our brains into something that we felt like we were contributing to something that was good, something that was fighting COVID, even though we're so early in the detection process for what this thing is going to be. There's just a positive thing. And, um, network and when you came on board and just rocketed up the charts <laughs> to your point right uh the beginning of 2020 is sucked and lockdown was rough on everybody and for at the beginning this really was about doing anything to, to you know no matter how small to feel like you were contributing to to, to variety even if in the end it, what we're doing is chasing down helping people chase down dead ends and help people helping folks fail fast right it was still something that we could do but then it started to change right it started to get kind of fun and you started to see you know folks hanging out virtually that haven't talked in 20 years right and applying skills together in ways that we'd probably only ever done at defcon drunk or something right in, in, a, in, a, in a you know a, but uh yeah, it, it really was kind of unique uh, in terms of kind of an opera, you know, how it's at the beginning, it was a kind of about survival, it was a coping mechanism, and now it's become something much more, I think. That's an awesome way of putting it. The distraction was amazing in the beginning, and you're right, it was, it was absolutely a coping mechanism. I was sharing screenshots and the URLs of that John Hopkins thing, which is oh, so hyper focused on how bad the world is right now. And, and this just brought a tiny little shine of positivity. And then you pile on all the awesome geekiness on top of it, how you were tweaking and tuning and making this thing absolutely burr. <laughs> and then at the same time, you've got this creative kind of art support vein happening right in in vain with the color in, you've got the you've got the 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 competition happening but it's friendly competition and, and it's supported by this art that's coming up in very right it, it just it got really really fun in a it, it, you know in, in a way that was uh very unexpectedly rewarding so uh absolutely out to you peg all right so um Root folds. Um, uh, can you guys see the the graphic here? There's a. Well, yep. I'm not sure. Okay, cool. So you see the PPD rising little guy on the to toilet. Yep. That was that was kind of all of us at a point um, where it's <laughs> like you wake up first thing in the morning or you know during a lunch break at work and you're like, what's the standings? Um, and uh, that's why that's why you want to fold. That's why you want to join our team because um, we're winning. We're doing really, really good. And so we're going to get into, uh, let's see, let me pass what, uh, this is kind of, uh, all right, here we go. Um, how to fold at home. Down, download your, your, download your client, create your new username and pass key and uh, join a team. We prefer if it's our team. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to stress the importance of the creating a passkey process. So we've got um, installation videos for all three of uh, the operating systems that the um, uh, Folding at Home client is available for. Um, in terms of the passkey process, the video that we've got for the Mac 
client is the one that kind of shows the passkey process. It's not a big deal. Basically, you just send them your email address and the username you want to use, and they send you a hexadecimal string that you, you paste in. Um, the presentation that we're using, it um, has some example, it has some example credentials. Uh, we're always going to use our team number because the um, and um, the credentials that I'm using for uh, a pass key and a, and a user in those videos is, is a is a user called shitty folding rigs. Uh, it's kind of made up of uh, the, the kind of the crappiest computers of some of us, you know, we dedicate one crappy computer <laughs> to that team. So if you have a crappy folding rig and you want to fold like like for that, feel free to copy the credentials that we've got here. Um, so um, to download um, whichever um, operating system you're using, you're going to go to folding at home slash start folding. It'll uh, pop up something with, uh, uh, it should prompt you with the appropriate operating system for you to download the client. If you're downloading for um, Linux, it's going to offer you three different components to download. For Mac and Windows, it's going to bundle those all into a single thing. There is uh, sort of the, the backend client itself. There's the um, FAH control and there's the FAH viewer. Um, uh, the control to me is the most useful component besides the kind of the command line stuff that does all the backend stuff. But um, if you haven't um, already started downloading your client, this is where you'd go to do it. There's installation guides there. I think that our target demographic here is a pretty smart one. So um, we can probably like roll into, um, uh, there's the uh, shitting folding, shitty folding rigs uh, information. I know it's kind of hard to copy down a big pass key like that. Um, let me, I can copy it from my email and, and put it into the chat window at a point if people are interested. Uh, because I know people are interested. Um, <laughs> um, so uh, the team number again for for our team is two five eight eight two nine. Um, we're a winning team. You want to join our team? And um, the pass key is important. If you don't generate the pass key, uh, you're you're gonna you're gonna wind up uh, uh, getting points that don't count and that's that kind of sucks um we've got a guy on our team who probably would have a silver challenge point right now if he had entered his pass key earlier <laughs> i'm talking about you swern <laughs> um, hey, yeah hey i just want to say um so this is space rogue uh it doesn't really matter what kind of rig you have or what kind of old computers you have like, I know you posted up the shitty folding rigs, but I mean, I'm over here folding with three old Mac laptops, right? They don't get that many points and they're all in a closet and they just kind of sit there and I still check the points every day and see how many I got. And as of today, I've crashed, I've crossed 10 million points, which is uh, uh, quite an accomplishment considering that some people are getting like 10 million points an hour, uh, mm -hmm. but I don't have any fancy GPUs or video cards. Uh, I'm just sitting here with my Mac laptops and, and one old HP all core i5s and i7s and they're doing their thing and they're ranking their points and they're folding their little proteins and i, I wake up every morning and check and make sure nothing crashed and everything's still going and it's really really warm in my closet but uh that's fine because that's where the laptops are I, I think uh, but i just want to tell you. everybody that i just want to tell everybody that, hey it doesn't matter what you got uh it's not the size of your computer that matters I think Every we need to send you some like unsung hero like GPUs for your shitty folding rigs going <laughs> like balls out all the time. Yeah, I haven't put them in shitty folding rigs. Although I did, I did. I also said that they're very. The client is very, very forgiving. I put the client on my media center machine in my living room that my kids use, and they didn't even notice a difference when the the Netflix got really blocky uh, and started to jerk jerk around on them. So uh, they, I still let it run downstairs on the. On the iMac, the old Core i5, uh, it still runs out a couple thousand points a day. So uh, it doesn't really matter what you got. Just go ahead and install that client and, and rock it. We have absolutely put, like, a, a, there's a fun emphasis on the competition. But the real goal of this is helping researchers and scientists generate the data that they need to figure out how to fucking beat this thing. 
And it does not matter, as Space Rogue said, if you have a closet full of laptops doing this hooked up to a dubious power switch source, uh, or uh, you have you know, a, a beautifully built uh, folding rig or Bitcoin mining rig that you're, you're repurposing for this, everything counts. Every point is sacred. We love them all. Every woo is sacred. That's right. Every woo is sacred. Um, I, I mean, I look it. at the charts every day to see what my position is. And then like, I, for the last couple of weeks, I've pretty much been, been holding steady at like 82 uh, on the team. Every time I move up a spot, like two or three people pass me and I fall back a couple spots. Uh, I'm just happy right now that I'm able to tread water with everybody else and all their, their fancy GPUs and, and fancy schmancy high-end computing systems. And I've got my, my four old laptops in the closet. There is no shade being thrown here at you, my friend. No shade whatsoever. Well, and with that said, we might as well like go ahead and like you know uh, explain the specifics of um, uh, so older computers not going to get as many points. Um, if you have a, well, so if you have a great GPU but you're on Mac or Linux, like the GPU is not going to help you. It's going to be CPU only. Um, work units that you get from the folding at home servers and um, you'll be able to sort of do more work units but they're not worth as many points um, so there's um, I've been kind of equating the uh, CPU versus GPU game as it's um, 100 uh, duck sized horses or one horse sized duck right um, um, and a fun example of that was when the team was first um, started there was a point where I got competitive and, and managed to muster up a whole lot of CPU power um, be, because I wanted to pass Golgo 13. <laughs> um, and there was this one day where it was like he put, he puts out he he says he says this thing and it hits me like what the actual he says that all he has is just like one folding rig with massive GPU capability. So he's like at that point I think he was uh, number two. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, like you're here with just one rig, and I've got like like, like 1,200 CPU cores, and I'm like trying to catch you. Um, so it's sort of a um, an interesting compare contrast uh, between the CPU and the GPU thing. So, um, but but don't let that discourage you. Um, um, all of the points are worthwhile. Um, and th by the way, the GPU does work in Linux. I think maybe we... Oh, good. I did not know that. Yeah, good. yeah. yeah. So it, it is highly driver dependent, but it works. Yes. Not idea, but yeah, it does definitely work. Um, yeah. So this is our team number, in case you haven't gotten it already, number 258829. Um, we'd love it if you join our team. Um, and... Uh, so, um, surprise stickers. How do you get stickers? Um, yeah, I, was, I guess I was supposed to finish this slide. <laughs> um, watch our Twitter account. Watch the Root Owns Twitter account, and we'll make sure that everyone um, gets the instructions as to how to get um, the awesome stickers, the, the four um, folding stickers that you saw when we did that uh, little montage there. Um, um, I don't know. Yeah, and I'm gonna be. I'm gonna be. I'll start a new contest tomorrow for new folders, and it'll be some kind of giant prize pack that'll that'll include include this book with all the the CDC guys, including the who initially refused to sign it. Uh, <laughs> some of my some of my personal CDC coin, uh, the the root folding coin as well. And then probably a large collection of my my sticker collection that, that I have, which is probably thousands. So yeah, mine's up there. Otherwise, I'd show them. I can't really stand up right now. But I just want to reiterate um, what X was just saying is there's going to be another specific contest announced tomorrow for new folders um, that has like pretty awesome prizes, including the signed Joseph Men book, um, uh, the coins, um, and stickers. Um, so we'll make sure that everyone gets the information to get all of that. Um, I guess, I guess we should probably touch on some of the aspects of, um, the, the more 
detailed um, folding at home stuff. Uh, for the client, um, the FAH control software, um, you can control multiple client computers. If you know the uh, IP address and NetMask of your remote computers, you can set it up so that you can control them from afar, which is pretty handy. Um, uh, we've got a, a link that's actually kind of long, so I'm going to let that <laughs> screen stay there for a moment. Uh, but I think that there's a lot of us who are controlling um, a bunch of our, our folding at home clients um, through this multi-client installation, which is, it's, it's saying multi-client installation, it's a phrase that I, I took from their website. It's not, it's, you don't have to install anything extra. You just have to configure your client to um, connect and to the other client to receive the connections. And um, it, it, it just, it allows you to pause or slow, medium, high, all of um, your various remote connections. It does require that you have a, clear connection between, you know, one end and the other. So if you've got a firewall between or other sort of security devices that are controlling access, you might, you know, need some stuff that's beyond the scope of our conversation here to sort of punch holes through things. Um, but um, it's a very useful component. Um, even if you just have like, I mean, I've got like three laptops in this room and even just being able to control them from my desktop computer without opening them up is, is pretty handy. Um, there is um, a command line only uh, interface, um, which is sort of the basic installation. If you do the basic, the I mentioned the like three component installation on the Linux side of things, it sort of starts with the command line stuff. Um, and um, it's pretty convenient if you're doing things through a remote shell um, um, to, be able to do the things without a graphical user interface. Um, there are uh, there's some documentation available on the Folding at Home website. It's it's probably you know, maybe not as extensive as it ought to be, but it it gives you um, everything you need to get the kind of um, you know pause, go, slow, medium, high stuff, um, uh, and the ability to potentially do that from remote interfaces. Um, troubleshooting there, uh, folding at home has some forms. Um, there's, um, I, I've seen discussion forums on Reddit and various places where, um, there's more conversations happening. There's only, I mean, we're, gosh, we have four minutes left in terms of an hour's time period. So there's only, uh, you know, so, so much uh, more detail that we can get into in terms of the troubleshooting kind of things. Um, but I haven't even had a chance to watch uh, the chat for any questions. Um, but I think that this kind of might be getting to, yeah, we're sort of um, coming to the end of, you know, the guided part of what we were doing and just kind of going into, uh, you know, if anyone has questions, dump them into our chat. and. Um, I don't know, everyone that's uh, like presenting, like, I mean, we can just keep going. Uh, <laughs> we're down to the last three minutes. Now I'm like, what do we do? What do we do? Um, um, hi, Scott. Hi, X. Hi, Bellum. Hi, Beams. Hi, Beams, literally. <laughs> I'm out of here. All right. So one thing I'll add, um, there is an absolute fun element of this, but uh, make sure you understand like the, when you start digging into this and, and getting into the tiny little tweaks that you can make, it's incredibly fun figuring out how you can optimize the CPU only stuff, figuring out how you can optimize uh, your GPU and what some of the, the, Pros and cons, like overclocking is actually a little bit detrimental in this because um, it affects the data quality on, on one side, uh, on the, re the research side. Um, but also an important lesson, recognize when your power, uh, like your, your kilowatt per hour costs are going to skyrocket during the heat wave and adjust accordingly. <laughs> uh, this will suck up a ton of electricity from your... <laughs> <laughs> I love network. 
Commit yeah, to your power. To, to, commit to the cause. <laughs> yeah, depending on how committed you become, adding, I mean, it's like turning on, you know, an extra hair dryer uh, in a room if you've got a couple of boxes going folding. Um, so rooms can get a little toasty, like Space Rogue was saying. Yeah, my office is 85 degrees now instead of 72 like the rest of the house. Yep. I'm, I'm and, and, I, and I've spent more on new GPUs than I have in the past 10 years. It's insane. But how, but how much fun was building that brand new box? Like, when was the last time any of us did that? The same box. Five years? <laughs> It's funny, like asking some folks about like, so why did you join? For some people, it was like, well, everyone was talking about it and I wanted to take part. And for other people, it's like, well, I needed an excuse to make a brand new awesome computer. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> it's pretty fun. Um, and But, you know, you don't have to dominate the charts. Um, as fun as it is, um, seriously, every, every point is awesome. Um, it, this all benefits everything. Um, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, uh, COVID, fuck COVID. Um, we all want to hug each other again someday. And uh, this is a potential path to that, so. Yeah, I think the last warning I'll give is that it's a very addictive habit. It can be. Agreed. Well, I'm like, shit, we have like 15 seconds left in terms of like, um, you know, the, the conference started recording at a point, I think, after we officially started. I'm wondering, like, do, do we do we roll the end credits now? And uh, sure, figure let's roll them. The All right, I'm going to roll the final credits. And um, uh, thank you, everybody. This has been a lot of fun. Um, um, feel free to, uh, you know, reach out to us and... Um, uh, <laughs> get more information, we'd love to have you join us. I keep making this thing Zoom. All right, hang on, I gotta get the credit video. It's pretty fun. Give me one moment. Be perfectly fair, like structure fires are, are a proud part of hacker tradition. That was fun.
All right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I feel like we might have left some things out, but uh, we'll figure out how to provide ways to connect all the dots. And and we love you and um, keep folding. And we'll all be able to hug again soon. And awesome. Thanks, Thanks Sophie. You're awesome.